Today we are here with a special guest, Diva Tomei. Diva is a talented woman. She studied biotechnology in Rome and then she got a PhD in Cambridge in bioinformatics. Then she moved to US and attended the Singularity University. Diva is the founder of a startup, Solenica, and the inventor of Kaya, a natural lighting robot. So, Diva, thanks for joining us today. Of course. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, tell us a little bit about your professional path and what personal branding means to you. Sure. So, um, I actually didn't really know what personal branding was before I was invited to this. Um, so I looked it up and it's actually, it really means um, how you uh, portray yourself to the world, how you come out to the world. Um, and um, in, you know, if I think of it that way, then I know I have been doing it a lot. Um, but uh, just to give you a little bit of a perspective on sort of what my path has been. As you said, I studied biotechnology here in Rome, here, well, in Rome. <laughs> and, um, um, and then I kind of kept pursuing an academic career, uh, which is why I went and did a PhD in, uh, at Cambridge uh, in bioinformatics. Uh, at that point, I started a um, program at Singularity University, NASA and Google. Uh, on exponential technologies and uh, intrap entrepreneurs, basically. And that's where I sort of learned that my real vocation is really the entrepreneurial one, uh, not so much the academic, which I had already been feeling a little sort of tight in. Um, so after that uh, experience at Singularity University, I went back, finished my PhD, and uh, founded Solanica. Um, the reason why I founded Selenica, not let's say a biotech or bioinformatics startup, is because um, I realized that uh, Kaya was a solution to many people's problem, uh, problems. And th the reason why I knew that is because I built the very first uh, Kaya prototype when I was uh, at Cambridge to solve my natural lighting problem. I was um, uh, spending all my time in this tiny office, very, very dark, with one window, so I had no access to natural lighting. Um, and it, that actually became a problem over time, and I uh, developed something that's called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, which is a, a depression that is linked to the absence of exposure to natural lighting. Um, so I decided to do something about it, and because I've been a maker, uh, thanks to you know my dad and sort of like that kind of a imprinting <laughs> from when I was a child, I just built the first prototype. Uh, and then people kind of kept telling me uh, that they needed one too for their own homes and their own offices. And that's kind of how uh, Solenica eventually started. So Diva, a recent uh, McKinsey report mm -hmm. finds that 12 trillion of US dollar can be added to the global GDP by 2025 uh, by improving gender equality. So you know that this conversation is part of the Women Network uh, uh, journey of GE and WRO. What do you think can be a key to success, so to achieve or improve this goal in terms of equality? Yeah, uh, that, this is a tough one. Um, so, well, there is definitely um, like a substantial benefit in putting more uh, women into leadership roles in businesses and this has been studied and proven, right? So yeah. th we should start there. Um, so it's really good for uh, the business and the individual. Um, the ways to get there, uh, the, the, I think there are multiple ways, but uh, sort of the, the, the umbrella principle, I, I believe it should be creating opportunities for women to step up. Because, you know, in, in any given environment, if, if a talented woman is not stepping up, there's something blocking her. Uh, and it could be an active block, but it, it could also be that she doesn't 
see the environment around her as an environment that gives her opportunities to step up. Yeah. So just create a void and, and, and let them see it uh, and go towards it and, and fill it. So creation of opportunity is, is really sort of the, the first most important um, aspect. Um, and then, you know, women love to take control. I hear. <laughs> so <Really>? it's. <laughs> yeah, I think you, we should work on that, on that principle, on the fact that uh, you know when a, a woman uh, is given the chance to take control, she grabs it and she can, you know, learn how to get a hold of it and and sort of in a sustainable way in the long yeah. term. Uh, Diva. It seems to me there are, and not just to me, there are still some barriers for women in technology and digital environment. Have you experienced that? And if so, how did you behave against this barrier? Right. Um, yes, I have experienced them. Um, in my personal case, um, this I, I've experienced it to be different uh, in different countries. Mm -hmm. So the, the place where I, I feel this um, the most is unfortunately in, in my home country, in, in Italy. Um, I've worked uh, you know, in, in Northern Europe as well and in the US and there's just very different kinds of uh, barriers there. Uh, the one the is a cultural one here, uh, right? So, um, and, and obviously sort of with the, it, it comes out more with the stakeholders that are investors in my case right yeah. so it's people that I go to to pitch my idea and uh, give them an understanding of the value of Solanica right so that they would want to invest and when that conversation happens I am constantly being sort of brought back to the feeling that I'm you know this person's like niece or daughter or like you know kind of like yeah it's it's just you're so cute, cute young lady. you're so cute <laughs> you're so cute and uh, the initially this really offset me because I'm not used to that um, so in my family in uh, sort of the professional sort of career that I have experienced abroad nobody ever treated me like that right so once I came back here and had to start having these conversations, they really did offset me and I, I felt really sort of displaced. Like I was not in my sort of yeah. sort of central axis anymore. Uh, and um, I, I observed myself and um, after all these meetings I would feel very frustrated. And then I, I understood that it was because I was changing who I was to comply to an image that they had of me. Right, so I was really not respecting myself. Yeah. Uh, in, and my identity. But the moment I understood that, um, it became my strong point, right? So I just didn't um, engage that way anymore. And of course, this has the um, side effect of making them feel a little uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of their problem. Yes. Like, you know, <laughs> it's not my problem. Yeah. So once you understand this, and this is the probably the strength of the personal branding, yeah. it's, it's a part of knowing yourself. I, I think you become much stronger and it's just easier to overcome obstacles because those are just there yeah. along the way, right? So th there's no way around them, but you can get better at overcoming them. Let's focus on Europe the same kind of question but focus on Europe. What's your experience and your view about the um, technology and digital environment and what's going on in Europe? Um, yeah, so my experience in Europe is that you can't really call it Europe when it comes to this particular problem because every country is, is still very different in the way that they approach it and the way that they uh, prioritize it, right? So y we see probably I would say Germany and the sort of the northern countries mm -hmm. leading the way, yeah. uh, showing the way. And uh, I believe that very recent sort of political, political outcomes uh, are showing that France will follow fast uh, and we are kind of lagging behind. So um, yeah, I, I don't think that in this particular instance we can really think of Europe as, as, as a you know one conglomerate, but there's still separate countries with their cultural heritage that dictates still the, the role uh, of women and how women are treated in the workplace. 
and at home. They're, these two things are very intimately related. Um, and, and yeah, so I think that we, we should definitely um, we should definitely try and follow the, the leaders in this because again, like I always come back to this, this is good business, right? Yeah. It's, it's good business and it just, it, it, makes, um, it makes a better business environment to have uh, equality uh, in, a, in a company. In okay. leadership roles. Thank you, Diva. So, at the end, we need a lot of divas, right? <laughs> uh, look at this uh, talented woman. She's strong. She's uh, uh, aware of her strength. So, we are now moving to a conversation uh, with uh, Aviora colleagues. So, thank you, everybody, and have thank a nice you day. for having me here. Bye. Thank you.